Welcome back to the channel. If you haven't been here before, welcome. My name is Dr. Trey Martin, and I'm a doctor of physical therapy in the Central Florida area. And the main bulk of my business is working with baseball players with both performance and also with injuries. Today's video, I just wanted to give a brief overview of conditions that I see in the clinic and times that I tell a player, I don't think you should throw through this. And I just wanted to go over some of the thought processes because I see a big lack of knowledge on, on this topic. I've, I've talked to guys that have felt a pop in their inner elbow even, and they didn't know that it was bad enough to stop throwing, so they kept throwing through it. So that's kind of what we're going to go through is just some signs and symptoms that I see um, on the medical front, and hopefully this gives you guys some insight on you know, places that it's not normal to have pain, um, and signs and symptoms that are absolutely don't throw, go seek out medical attention, that kind of thing. So I hope this is a very helpful learning experience. Let's get into it. So I'll start first with a quick story. Twice in the last month or so, I've heard instances of baseball pitchers that have been throwing in a game. They felt a pop in their inner elbow and they kept throwing for a couple more batters and they, they didn't shut down immediately. Now the damage was probably done, probably didn't wind up affecting the long-term outcome of it, but needless to say, I've learned that there's just a big lack of knowledge of you know, even extreme examples like that, like an elbow pop of, of people just throwing through things they shouldn't, starting from little leaguers to high schoolers to college guys to pro guys. Um, I think what we're seeing is a lot of parents, coaches, and players are not really realizing that what they're experiencing is either already a moderate to significant injury or they're right on the path to it. So let's start with the elbow today and then later on uh, for the next video, we'll get in the shoulder, and then eventually I'll start covering some objective testing that I'm using to kind of differentiate between this is normal soreness versus injury. One thing I do have to add as a disclaimer though, I am a medical provider, but I'm not your medical provider. None of this is medical advice. This is just me speaking from experience of uh, things I've seen clinically. So don't take this as a, oh, he said that this wasn't that bad. I'm gonna go throw through it. It's not what I'm trying to tell you. I'm trying to give you just a little practical overview of situations and signs and symptoms that are not good. So like I said, today we're gonna to start with the elbow. Um, one of the most easy ones off the bat, if you feel a significant pop followed by pain, followed by anything down into the pinky or ring finger, that is a obvious do not throw anymore. Going off that thought process, um, say there's no pop, but you've been starting to experience a little bit more like pinky numbness, ring finger numbness, um, that's normally a sign of ulnar nerve inflammation. Um, and it can also be a sign of some other things like in the UCL area. So again, numbness in the finger, go get that checked out too. It can also come from the neck, thoracic outlet, a couple different examples. So numbness, not good, don't throw, pop, obviously. Let's get into a couple more of the, uh, call it underlying ones that people don't really think about too much. Um, one is forearm tightness. I've seen a lot of guys that come in and it's their forearm is just locked up, starting off the bone here and all the way down. Um, forearm tightness, I'm not saying always means something, but a lot of the times if your forearm is locked up, it is trying to add stability to help protect their inner elbow. So a lot of times you'll see that, you know, a guy maybe already has some, some issue in the ulnar collateral ligament or, you know, the ulnar nerves irritated, um, or there's like a little bit of like a stress reaction inflammation going on and their forearm locks up. And the forearm's just trying to protect you. So I, I've talked to some athletes that are like, yeah, you know, my forearm's tight ever, after every time I pitch. Um, and this is one that's also in the shut down, go get medical advice type of category. Because normally what I'm seeing is by the time the pronator and uh, flexor mass has started to kind of, you know, lock in, it's either hiding an, an already existent injury or it is predicting that, hey, we're going to have a, a bigger issue in the next two weeks, four weeks. Um, if you follow Major League Baseball quite a bit, you'll see on the, on the bottom line, like, you know, so-and-so pitcher just went down with forearm tightness. He's on the disabled list. And then they come back and it seems like they blow out their elbow pretty soon after that. So it's definitely in the, um, the yellow light category of things of like, be on the lookout for this because to stabilize the inner elbow, we have UCL, the joint itself and how it's configured and then muscle mass here, and then there's a couple other things that kind of help with that too, but that's our main three stabilizers. So 
if you know the joint it does what it does um, but if the ucl is not able to pick up its end of the bargain and then your flexor pronator mass goes down for the count the ucl is going to be asked to do way more than it can um, so again that is a a little bit more of one that i see missed a lot and i'll i'll talk to guys that are like yeah i just can't like you know it feels tight out here and i i've been trying to stretch and nothing's really changing it that is your brain trying to get a little extra stiffness to the region to stabilize for the fact that either something's going on or something's about to happen. So don't just ignore that symptom. Another one too that's kind of a, a quiet one that I see people miss quite a bit is any form of swelling in the forearm at all. That's another go get that checked out, go get some imaging. Typically there's swelling, you know, we're seeing some sort of inflammatory process uh, that's going on. Um, or, you know, we may be seeing already that there's a little bit of like instability or laxity where the UCL is not doing its full job. And now we're creating a little bit more friction and motion. We're getting some swelling there, or we could be seeing the beginning signs of a stress reaction or something of the sorts. Um, so that's kind of the big four pop, numbness, tingling, um, forearm locking up slash tightness, any swelling in here from a motion based standpoint. One thing I tell guys to think about too, if you start feeling like this doesn't feel very good or like, you're pushing back this way or even arm down at the side, pushing that way. And you're getting a pretty good amount of, of, of inner elbow, either pain or it just feels like, Ooh, I don't want my elbow to go this way. It doesn't feel very comfortable. Um, that's also a sign of, of that. There's probably something going on that is not healthy to throw through. Um, so that's just a, a quick self screen, like, you know, just a little pressure out this way or like have a little pressure there. Um, and if that, if you're feeling that kind of right off that bone and right along that area of the, of the inner elbow, then that's a definite no throw. Um, some signs to self testing that are in that kind of, you know, not good, but you know, maybe, uh, don't panic on type of category, the middle of the forearm, like I was talking about feeling tight earlier, if that's always tense and feeling a little bit painful, Sometimes you could just have an isolated forearm flexor strain or pronator strain. Um, so that maybe doesn't spell doom, but again, that's in an area that if that starts to fatigue and weaken, our inner elbow is going to take on more UCL slash Tommy John ligaments going to be overstressed. So that's kind of a, the quick self test of like looking at the inner elbow slash Tommy John area. Um, I will say that I think there's a big misconception that people think, this like if i'm having an inner elbow issue whether it's like ucl ulnar nerve um you know even some more of the bony conditions like bone spurs they think there's just going to be this immediate obvious sign let's take ucl for example because it's the most popular well-known slash common thing going on right now um with ucls people think that they're just going to always just have this pop and it's just going to explode but typically a lot of ucl tears are, are death by a thousand paper cuts so those little subtle forearm locked up, swelled a little bit, feels a little off. Normally guys will just kind of let that go for a while and then it results in that final tear. So I think what we're gonna learn uh, long-term is that there are signs along the way, whether it's from like some of the cuff strength numbers or some of the grip numbers or some of the forearm numbers or, or shoulder range of motion lessening across the season. I, there, there are warning signs that are there. Um, but for most people, they just don't have either access to this type of information um, or they're just not you know, aware of, of what they're exactly feeling. And then they just you know, push through it because they really want to win that. Um, you know, they're in the state playoffs and they feel like they have, to, they have to push through. So take all of these things just to account. Um, if you guys have any questions about this type of thing, you can always shoot me an email or find me on Instagram and shoot me a DM. Um, I just kind of want to start putting some, some thought process out there because I feel like when I evaluate kids in clinic, I'm telling their parents, Hey, this is, I'm seeing this. And to me, it's not, I won't say it's obvious, but it's fairly obvious. And I'm, I, I'm realizing now that most parents and kids just don't know that like some of these signs and symptoms that are going on are, are bad things. They just think, Oh, I'm a little stiff. I'm a little tight. Um, but those are kind of the normal warning sign areas. If you're, you know, some more like, uh, innocent sounding ones, like if you're kind of having some like, you know, bicep soreness or backside of the shoulder feels like it's a little bit tight, fatigued, um, mid scap, um, those type of areas. There are some that are just more of like throwing soreness and not something to freak out about, but anything in this area, um, typically it's, 
it's not a oh throw through and condition through the vast majority of the time if you're feeling anything of significance there and it's lasting you know more than you know a couple days even um, it's time to shut down find a good local orthopedic with some baseball experience reach out to a baseball physical therapist um, sometimes we can get you guys in a little quicker and tell you like hey no this is actually a pretty big deal go see the ortho get an mri um, or just find someone in your corner that has some experience in sports medicine that's a professional. Um, so that, that's just a good way to go about things. And I've been trying to talk to a lot of kids now about it's better safe than sorry. I've talked to some some young athletes that have a big future ahead of them, and they think, well, you know, it's not that bad. My arm's not killing me. I'm going to throw through. And that's just the worst thing to do. You might as well uh, live to fight another day, and health is your greatest asset.